Welcome to the Electricity of Life, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part one of this presentation, our guest Dawson Church discussed his remarkable investigation into the role of consciousness in one's physical well-being. In his book, Mind to Matter, Dawson cites voluminous scientific research which suggests that our minds can profoundly affect our bodies and even the external world. Emotions can be, quote, stored in the body and over time can lead to imbalance and illness. In this conclusion, Dawson begins by addressing the notion, which is highly controversial in Western medicine, that energy exists in the body and can aid in healing. I've read critics, for example, who say there's no, there's no plausible role for energy in biology or in medicine or in healing. And when I read those, those comments, I think, hey, Guy, have you ever looked at an MRI? Our magnetic field, our EEG is reading our electrical field, it's reading the electrical activity of the brain. You can measure the, those fields of the body 15 feet up from the body with a simple device. I carry a little pocket device called a galvanometer with me when I go to conferences or to do demonstrations. And in just a few seconds, I can show where your acupuncture points are because they have a different electrical charge than the skin around them. So uh, we are energy beings and MRIs, EEGs, all of these things use those phenomena to diagnose and to treat people who, who are sick. So they're there. Energy medicine too, energy shifts produce dramatic changes in cells and in bodies. And again, I have a lot of, lot of these, uh, these stories in, in Mind to Matter, a lot of these studies in Mind to Matter. There's, there's lots of case histories, lots of evidence, there are lots of randomized controlled trials. Um, on our nonprofit website, we have over 600 studies of people healing from anything from Alzheimer's to ADHD, to obesity, to kidney disease, to metabolic failure, all kinds of healing uh, studies of people who use energy therapies like Reiki, like EFT, energy medicine, uh, Joe Ray, therapeutic touch, and so on. And so, again, this, this isn't you know three studies. This is over a thousand studies cumulatively of these kinds of techniques, and they show that that uh, energy therapies are, not only are they often effective, they're often effective really quickly. Dawson explores in Mind to Matter the scientific research of Dr. Bill Bankston, which showed remarkable effects of, quote, energy healing in many laboratory experiments. While the Thunderbolts project, as always, takes no position on these questions, we asked Dawson to enumerate the findings of Dr. Bankston's studies. Yeah, and Bill is unique because there are a lot of animal trials of Bill's method, which is called cycling. It's an energy healing technique where people hold their hands over a human being or over uh, an animal, and they they do a mental process that is designed to shift the energy of the, the disease. And Bill's work is unique because there are now 13 randomized controlled trials that various people have done of his method, on usually on mice. And the usual way these, these experiments are done is that the, the mice are injected with a substance that causes them to develop cancer. And they develop these large mammary cancers, which eventually crush their organs and they die in usually 15 to 20 days. The longest a mouse has ever survived in these trials is 21 days. And um, in, in Bill's research, in the research of Bill's method, just study after study finds that these mice heal. These mice heal, and not only do they heal from those cancers, they then live out the full lifespan of a lab mouse, which is about two years, and they're immune to cancer after that as well. In one really cool trial I report in Mind to Matter, they had Bill sending energy to a group of mice at a distant location, and they were measuring the electromagnetism in the room right below the cage that held the mice. And so at random intervals, the, a buzzer would sound in Bill's home a long way away. He would then send energy to this cage of mice in a room at a university distantly. And then there were other uh, mice in other cages in other parts of the university, but, but only one, which was in a room painted green that he was targeting. So the mice in the green room got the energy treatment from Bill. The mice in the red and purple rooms, different parts of, of the campus didn't get uh, that. And they had this magnetometer underneath the cage. And at the very moments when there were those signals for Bill to send energy to those mice, 
the magnetometer fluctuated by about 25%. So massive shifts in electromagnetism. This is an energy field that's supposed to be totally stable at any geographical point on the Earth's surface. And yet it fluctuated hugely. And only at the very moment when Bill sent energy to mice in the green room and the magnetometers in the purple and red rooms were unaffected. So energy heals energy. There's, there's so much evidence for this that I already urge people to use energy approaches. They're not invasive. There are no bad side effects. They're, uh, they don't hurt your body. In fact, in one uh, review I, I, I cover in the book, in Mind to Matter, I show that there are 175 studies published over the last 50 years showing the beneficial effects of various energy therapies on our bodies. And, the, and the, these, these effects are not, not small. Stem cells regenerating, stem cells adhering to diseased tissue and repairing it, telomeres lengthening, enzymes that are helpful to our metabolism in increasing in, in amount, stress hormones like cortisol decreasing, immune factors like Im immunoglobulins increasing, all of these things happening on the basis of energy treatments. So um, even though it's energy, it's producing massive shifts in the physical material of our bodies. When I began to look at the science of how our consciousness affects the world around us, I thought I would find a few suggestive studies. What I was surprised at was how many studies I found and what they show. And so it turns out that there is evidence, either uh, suggestive evidence or really solid evidence, that our consciousness, human consciousness, affects the four fundamental forces of physics. And those are electromagnetism, gravity, the strong nuclear force that holds an atom together, and also the weak nuclear force, which is measured, measured in the form of ra radioactive decay of uranium, plutonium, americium, francium, all of those elements. They, they give off these particles, and then they de degenerate over the over course of years. That is the weak nuclear force. But, but there's evidence that all four of these forces are affected by, by human awareness. And the most interesting practical studies I talk about in the book are those conducted on water. And so water is a very simple molecule. It has one big oxygen atom, two small hydrogen atoms attached to it. And the bonding angle between those three atoms is 104 and a half degrees. And that's just constant. It's been measured for close to a century. We know that the, the angle at which those two hydrogens join that big oxygen is always 104 and a half degrees. That's just a fact. So what, one of the most intriguing studies was done looking at that bonding angle after water had been blessed by a healing touch practitioner. So the, so the practitioner held his hands over the, the vial of the flask of water, didn't actually touch it, but held his hands near it, had the intention of healing flowing through his hands, and then the water was measured again. And that bonding angle between those two hydrogens changed from 104 and a half degrees to less than that. There was a, a substantial change in the actual molecular structure of water that was blessed by a healer. Then in another series of studies, researchers took water that had been blessed and used it to water plants. And they found that the plants that had been watered with blessed water grew much faster, much stronger, had a higher chlorophyll content than those that were watered with control water. And so it looks from these kinds of, of trials that we're literally able to shift purely by intention the, um, the, the molecules, at least of water around us. Now, there's other research, which I talk about in the book, showing that we can affect DNA. And this series of studies was really intriguing because they had people intend to change the configuration of DNA. And DNA, of course, is a double helix, has a certain degree of twist to it, looks like a ladder, but a twisted ladder. And the amount of twist, the degree of twist in a sample of DNA can be measured using some elaborate equipment. So researchers said to the, these volunteers in the study, they said, okay, here's a, here's a beaker containing human DNA, and we want you to make that DNA twist tighter. And so these people sat there in the room with a beaker of DNA, focused their intentions on the DNA, for it to twist tighter. The scientists measured the DNA after the intention, nothing happened. But then they had those volunteers enter 
a deeply coherent state. So when you're meditating, when you're in deep meditation, your heart rhythm becomes coherent, your brain rhythm becomes coherent, and those entrain your whole body. When those coherent people projected their intention into the DNA flask, the DNA did indeed twist tighter. So then the researchers, they did a whole series of these experiments. They then said, okay, we're going to give you three vials of DNA. So there across the lab, you see there's a middle one, there's a left-hand one, there's a right-hand hand flask of DNA, identical samples of DNA. We want you to intend to twist the one, this, the DNA in the middle flask tighter and leave the flask on the right and the left untouched. And again, when they weren't in coherence, nothing happened. When they were in coherence, they changed the middle flask, but not the two other flasks. They, the researchers then said, okay, let's see if this is an effect, an artifact of your, your own individual energy field. Let's move these things 50 miles away. They then put the three beakers 50 miles away. They then said, okay, now we want you to, to, to change the twist in only the right-hand one and not the other two. And the, the, the meditators were able to do that. So here we have human intention literally affecting the conformation of the DNA molecule. And if that isn't exciting to think that your, your thoughts, your consciousness, your degree of coherence is literally shifting molecules distantly uh, away from your body in, in the next room, 50 miles away, in the case of one Qigong master, 1,200 kilometers away, uh, the effect was still seen. So this is really amazing that science is now giving us the tools to show these effects, and we're just at the, at the dawn of being able to use them therapeutically and for human good.